Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the amazing beauty of creation. In this episode we're going to continue our discussion about bees. Now bees are such remarkable remarkable creatures. In the last episode we spoke about the different types of bees that you'll uh, find in a typical hive. In this episode we're going to talk about their homes, the hives. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, وَأَوْحَى رَبُّكَ إِلَى النَّحْلِ أَنِ اتَّخِذِي مِنَ الْجِبَالِ بُيُوتًا وَمِنَ الشَّجَرِ وَمِمَّا يَعْرِشُونَ So here Allah Ta'ala makes specific reference to the homes of the bees, meaning the hive. He says, and your, your Rabb, your, your, your Lord, inspired the bees. When we, when we talk about awha, if you'll recall in a previous episode, we spoke about the word awha, what it means when it's referred to an animal. It means that it's been inspired, it's been taught, it has the, uh, the, the, the instinct built into its brain from the time it's born. So this bee has been taught so uh, by Allah Ta'ala, anittakhidhi min al-jibali buyutan, that create construct in the mountains your homes and in the trees and in the trellises that that human beings make so any solid structure that you find is good enough to build your homes so we can almost imagine that Allah Ta'ala didn't just instruct it that go and find these three things uh, mountains and trees and people's uh, human built structures uh, and build your hives but he also inspired the bee and taught the bee how to build the hive what materials to use and what's the best and the most efficient design to use because I mean if you look at the way that bees have built the hive it's phenomenal it's amazing it's unbelievable and Today we're going to discuss that. We're going to look deeper into a bee's hive. What goes on there? How is it constructed? Why is it constructed in the way that uh, that it is? And then you'll see that there's no way that a tiny little creature like this, without an engineering degree, without experience in science and technology, can create such a technological marvel and a technological wonder. So tell, uh, tell us, the bee's hive, Firstly, what, what is it even made of? Where do the bees get the materials to build their, the, to construct their hives? Okay, so bees build their hives out of a substance they excrete called beeswax. So bees eat honey and then they turn it into beeswax. But beeswax is quite expensive for bees to create. It takes approximately 6 to 8 kgs of honey to produce just 1 kg of beeswax. So they, they need to eat that honey and then process the beeswax in their bodies. And then they excrete the beeswax. Now bees also, I mean, if you look at a hive, the first thing you notice is the pattern. They always build their hives out of hexagons. Okay. It's not fully understood why. Naturally, we can't just go and ask a bee why it's doing that. But one of the theories is for efficiency. You see, when you tile hexagons together, it creates a grid with equal sized cells while minimizing the surface area. So basically what this means is by building out of hexagons, it allows bees to build with the same size cells while reducing the amount of materials they use. And this makes sense considering how expensive beeswax is to produce. They don't want to let any go to waste and they want to save as much beeswax as possible wherever they can. So it's a very clever feat of engineering that the bees pull off. Okay, so the hexagon versus the square, all right? I'm guessing that the hexagon has an advantage over the square in the sense that uh, it's stronger. If you look at, if you try and imagine an object that's hexagonal in, in, in shape, it actually has more shorter sides and more sides, so it's stronger. Mm. So if you try crushing something that's a hexagon versus a square, a square could collapse on itself, it could collapse in the middle also. So maybe that's one of the considerations why they went with hexagons and not uh, squares. Yeah, structural integrity is another theory. 
but naturally we can't ask the bees so we're not too sure all we can do is uh, look at the bees and then try to uh, try to think wh what they think and but I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, it when does. you look at that hexagonal shape, if if and how the the hives, the the combs, uh, you know, the, the little cells within the mm. combs actually interlock together, and the yeah. strength, because I mean, it it carries a phenomenal weight compared to its its uh, size and thinness. If you think about honey, you lift a jar of honey; it's heavy. So this uh, beeswax, this hive, is actually carrying that the weight of that honey amazing yeah. and then another little feat of engineering that the bees do is when they build their cells they build them tilted upwards so this way when they store honey or pollen or even the younger bees inside there's less chance of it falling out okay so to understand this let me let me get this clear the hives are built vertically right so you've got the these these uh, vertical hives and the the cells stick out uh, parallel to the ground okay and uh, th well not parallel but slightly you say tilted upwards okay between 9 and 14 degrees upwards so this prevents any spillage happening fantastic yeah. now in a hive there are two types of cells that the bees build both of them are hexagons but there's slight uh, variations so the first type of cell is the, the worker cell. It's referred to as the worker cell, and it's the most common type of cell in a hive. And these cells are used to firstly store honey and pollen, and secondly to raise baby bees, the baby bee larvae. Um, so they got a kind of uh, incubator inside there. Exactly, and I think we'll, we'll discuss that uh, in a bit more detail uh, towards the end of this, this podcast. And the second type of cell that the bees build is referred to as the drone cell. Now these drone cells are identical to worker cells except that they are slightly bigger. And these cells are primarily used to raise drone bees. Uh, they can't use the same worker cells because drone bees are a lot bigger than the worker bees. Okay, just to recap, what are drone bees? The drone bees are male bees that the only purpose is to mate with queens and that's it but they are a lot bigger than the the worker bees so these drone cells they are primarily used to raise the drone bees but occasionally uh, the bees will use them to store honey if uh, space is an issue now when you look at a beehive it's not made of like one solid ball or one solid structure. It's actually several vertical columns hanging from the ceiling of whatever structure uh, they're building their, their hives in. And these, these uh, vertical combs, as they refer to, generally have a one centimeter gap between them. That gap is referred to as bee space. And this allows bees to crawl between them and access both sides of the comb. So any any idea, do, do we as, as, as uh, do scientists have any idea why the bees build these hives in different sections rather than one big structure? Well, one of the theories is that it allows them to expand more easily. You see, they can start off with just one comb and then as the colony grows, they build another and another and another and mm. they just keep expanding that way. So it's a very modular way of building. Now in a comb, there are these sections. Each comb is split up into several sections and each section has a specific role. So the first section is the honey storage. So this is one of the biggest sections and most of the time the bees will uh, Look, we'll use the, the top of the comb for the honey storage uh, section. And this section is primarily used to store honey. The second section is the brood nest. Now this section is used to hatch and raise bee larvae. So this, uh, this section is located at the bottom of the comb, where it's easier to control the temperature. This is important because bee uh, baby bees are very sensitive to heat and they need a constant temperature of 
between 32 and 36 degrees Celsius. That okay. is very specific. That is a very small temperature range. And it, if it gets colder than that, the bees can die. If it gets hotter than that, they can also die. So, so how do the bees actually regulate temperature in the, in the hive? So that's actually very interesting. You see, if it gets too hot, bees will use water to cool the hive down. So they'll bring water from outside and use it to thermoregulate. But if it gets too cold, what the bees will do is they'll detach their wings from their wing muscles. And what this will do, it will allow them to vibrate those muscles without actually starting to fly, without moving their wings. So it's, it's very similar to putting a car into neutral and then revving the engine. This is essentially what the bees are doing. So what does that actually do? Does it, does it just... That generates heat. Now, a lot of insects actually do this here to warm up those muscles before they fly because insects, they are not uh, endothermic, which means that they don't f they're not warm-blooded like mammals are. Okay. They need outside temperatures to heat them up. But if it's too cold outside, then what they do is they do this uh, technique to warm up their flight muscles because if those muscles are too cold, they get stiff and they can't fly. So a lot of insects do that, but bees have found a way to exploit it to not only heat themselves, but to heat the entire hive as well. Fantastic. But how did they, how did they even figure that out? Amazing, isn't it? Truly. Now, the third section of the hive is pollen storage. Now, this is a very small section because the only use for pollen in a hive is to feed baby bees. Baby bees don't, uh, when they're really young, they don't eat honey, but pollen instead. So bees will normally locate the pollen storage above or to the sides of the brood nest. For easy access, For obviously. easy access. And the final section is the drone comb. Now this section is made out of those drone cells and is used for raising and housing drone bees. So the, the term drone comb, it, it uh, hints at a special comb, a special section just for these drone cells. Is that is that what I'm uh, what I'm uh, reading here? Is that correct? Exactly. So, so like these VIPs get their own. They get their section. own section, and but if the the bees are running out of space, then they'll occupy some of those cells to then store honey. Fantastic. So, you know, we spoke about the the ant homes before. Uh, the ant castle or the burrows that they make and the level of organization and the le level of structure that there is within them. When you look at the bees, they seem to have taken it to a much higher level because they're not just digging and burrowing, but they're actually constructing their own homes. Uh, I don't think this we really truly appreciate what's going on here. Here you've got these people. Out of nothing, they create these homes and these are not just haphazardly created these are not just you know thrown together these are specifically constructed using the best possible materials i mean if you look at the the beeswax there's nothing more efficient than that because it's coming from the bees body and if you look at a comb if you hold it in your hands that beeswax is thinner than paper it's absolutely thin so it's not just the construction material but but it's in the way that this, these, this, these little walls are constructed and then taking it a step further, the way that they are put together in that hexagonal shape and the slight tilt upwards to prevent spillage. I mean, imagine trying to store a, a jar uh, a, a perpendicular or per vertical to, to, to parallel to the ground uh, with honey inside it. The, the honey will just keep oozing out. Naturally, you'll have to tilt that jar upwards. So... The, the angle has been precisely calculated. Air conditioning is sorted within the, the hive. I mean, they've got, from what you described, they've got uh, a water cooling system and then the body can warm the, the hive. It's amazing. So they've got a temperature regulated ecosystem that they've, that they've created and it's using, you know, uh, the best practice in engineering and, and geometry, which I forgot to mention, you know, which is the, the shape, the hexagonal shape of the cells. So these creatures are truly amazing in their prowess, in their capabilities and what they've, uh, they've actually created. And I think the next time we look at a bee's hive, 
we're going to look at it very differently. We're going to see this hive for what it is, nothing short of an engineering marvel. But then this raises an obvious question that how does a tiny creature like this that doesn't have an engineering degree, that doesn't have uh, you know, any, any uh, schools that it, it, it goes to, how does it know to create these things? And I'm not saying that it's born with uh, you know, certain skills, it's born with instincts. That's there. But I'm saying that the very first bees, how do they figure out that we need, firstly, to make this chemical substance called honey, and then we need to make these little uh, homes of ours, and they're going to be drawn, you know, done to specifications. They're going to be made in a certain shape. And, oh, we're going to need a uh, special material to make them. Something that's water resistant, ultra lightweight, super, super thin, and uh, also very, very strong. And also, we need to be very efficient as far as space is concerned. Um, how do we do this? Do you think that bees actually sat around thinking about this problem and then finding a solution? They didn't because they didn't need to because they've been inspired like the ISS. Allah Ta'ala inspired the bees. He taught them this. It was his inspiration, his knowledge that he had uh, given them how to build their hives, how to make their honey, how to make the beeswax. And as you'll see in next week's episode, we commonly associate bees with honey and beeswax, but there's also another very interesting substance that they that they make. So now when we when we look at these creatures, when we look at the amazing things that they create and we look at the the beautiful um, symmetry and the geometry that goes into these things, I think it it makes sense that we are reminded of the creator who not just taught these creatures, but created them in the first place. He made them in the first place. You look at the structure of the bee's body, the way that it's super efficiently designed to carry out its purpose, the way its legs are designed, the way its wings are designed. I mean, detachable wings. I learned something new. I didn't realize that, that there were bugs that actually had detachable wings. So bees actually detached their wings so that they could vibrate those muscles. And... You know, the, the whole concept of air conditioning within the hives, it's amazing how they use their own bodies to heat the hives and, you know, they use they know that they need to use water to cool the hives. So in all of this, if you look at the way the bees are made and the organizational structures within the bee colony, and then you look at the physical structures of the, the hive, you can only see one thing here. You can see and marvel at the creator who made these amazing, amazing little creatures. So that's a wrap for today's episode. And uh, I think we've got something really exciting for next week, though. Yeah, next week, we're going to talk about honey, uh, about how bees make the honey and the benefits of honey. Sweet. That's going to be a sweet episode. And there's also we'll also be talking about another less known but extremely interesting uh, product that bees produce as well. All right, that's that's awesome, and I'm I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm really particularly enjoying this discussion around bees, and uh, as always, I hope our listeners enjoyed this episode as much as we did, and also learned as much as we did, you know, in doing our research for this episode. And above all, I think everyone listening to this episode has a newfound appreciation for these tiny little creatures, and more importantly for their creator. We'll catch you in the next episode.